Hello and welcome to the second Palm Silver tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Palm Silver to analyze your localization microscopy data. Okay, first things first, you are going to need the example data that's supplied on the Palm Silver website, so you can download it here. So save the file and unzip it somewhere on your computer and then navigate to that directory in MATLAB. You can Open the Palm Silver application by typing Palm Silver at the MATLAB command prompt, and the application will appear on your screen. Okay, so just a quick rundown of the windows in the application. On the left here, you've got your visualization window that shows your data at the moment, it's just showing some randomly generated simulated data. Surrounding it are various items which we will discuss which control how your data is visualized and then on the right is the window which allows you to crop your data based on the localization parameters so we are going to load our example data using import in the file menu you can see here there's a couple of default localization microscopy software outputs here, which you can load from Palm Server. Um, if your localization software isn't listed here, then you can just load your data as a generic text file. And the only limitation of that is that the axes, which are plotted on your 2D histogram here, won't be set by default. In this case, we're going to load data from the fitting software RapidStorm. So we're going to load the FITC Dendra 2 text file and you can see the data pops up here. So what you'll immediately notice is a problem that's common in localization microscopy visualization, which is that the pixels, which contain lots of localizations, are drowning out the low localization pixels, making it hard to visualize. And this is because we've got a linear color map. So to fix this, for visualization purposes, we can make our color map nonlinear by changing the gamma on the rendering. So if we reduce the gamma below one, then you can see that the pixels which don't contain many localizations, just a few ones, they become visible. If you want to do quantitative analysis on your output image, uh, for example using image day later or something like this, be very careful and in general I would recommend only using a linear color map for quantitative analysis. But for visualization, nonlinear gamma works great and you can see the localizations for instance in this case you can see that you've got the outline of a bacterium but most of your localizations are centered in the middle in what's called a Z ring but anyway um, okay so how do we navigate our data if we click anywhere on the data set then the window will recenter around that click and we can use the middle mouse wheel the behavior of which is set in this window so if by default it's set to zoom so when we click and scroll on the middle mouse wheel then we can zoom in on our data. If at any point you want to reset to the full field of view of your data, just click here, click fit. Okay, great. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can visualize your data and it's all controlled here. So you can set the resolution of your plot here. So 256 is the default. You can increase that to 1024 by 1024. And what you'll notice is that when you zoom in, the number of pixels stays the same. Okay. There's various different ways that you can um, render your data. For example, you can do a scatter plot, which is sometimes useful if your data is very low density, so if there's very few localizations. Um, and a very common and useful localization rendering method is histogram plus Gaussian filter or Gaussian blur, which is where you blur your histogram with a, a, a radius with a width equal to your localization uncertainty, which in this case was about 15 nanometers. Um, you can also, for example, decrease it and you'll see the point-like nature of your localizations up here. Okay, great. Um, You can also render in 3D. 
So now color corresponds to the Z value. Um, and you can change the, the maximum intensity value so you can saturate bits of your image, for example, to, to show the low intensity bits of your image in more detail. So for example, here, let's decrease this maximum. And now all of the low intensity bits pop up, but you can set it back to the maximum value in the current field of view by clicking auto. You can change the color map. Some of these are more useful than others. Um, and you can plot what axis, you can choose what axis is plotted here. So for example, we can plot X against Z instead. And if we set one to one here, then you can see that obviously your, your example is quite thin. Um, and you can stick that back. Okay, great. Now we get to the sieving part of the tool. So you can interactively exclude any part of your data based on the properties of the fit to the single molecule. So for example, you can exclude any localizations that contained less than 300 photons, just like that, or more than say, 2000, like that. What's nice about this is that it's non-destructive. So I can reset this and the localizations will appear. You can see that the number of localizations plotted at any one time in the field of your plot are there. So for example, if I plot 300 and this 19,000 disappears and reduces to, to say 4,000. If I want to permanently exclude all the other localizations, then for example, because I want to export the data to, for further analysis separately, then you click the points menu and you can click sieve. Sieve by itself will exclude all of the points outside of the current field of view. Sieve no XYZ will keep points in the whole field of view and it will just exclude, um, for instance, on this case, based on intensity. So if we click sieve, then you can see when I zoom out, all of the rest of my bacteria have disappeared. And if I reduce the intensity back to zero here, then if I refresh the histogram, you can see they've all been chopped off and thrown away. Okay, so let's reload our data set. Great. Now another common task, which is important for localization microscopy, is grouping localization. So you have a single molecule and it's on and you're recording images of it, the images of that molecule until it bleaches will typically be, would be um, recorded over several frames. And you want to combine those several frames into a single um, event for a single molecule. And this is particularly important, for instance, if you want to count molecules. So how do you do that? You go points and click group. You've got two parameters here. So this maximum distance is the radius in which a molecule is allowed to move between two frames um, until it's considered a different molecule. And this maximum gap um, is the number of frames for which a molecule is allowed to be off, i.e. blink, and still be considered a single molecule. So maximum distance, typically pick at least twice the localization uncertainty and gap of time depends on what you're studying, but say pick zero. So you can click that and it will run. And then you can use this grouping column. So you'll notice that if I tick grouped, then the number of localizations plotted decreases. And that's because I'm now plotting molecule events rather than raw localizations. Um, okay, so that's essentially the basic functionality of Palm Siver. Uh, a couple of other things to note is that you can toggle your color bar and your scale bar here. Um, most, of, most of the additional functionality of Palm Siver is contained in the plugins menu, which is extensible and fairly easy to write your own plugins to analyze data in whatever way you like. I'll just give you a quick rundown of this. There's documentation on, on the other plugins on the website. 
So for example, um, you can use the Z cross section plugin to plot arbitrary X, Z profiles along a line. So for example, I click this line and I can set the thickness to, in this case, 200 nanometers. So that's 100 nanometer above, 100 nanometer below. Click cross section view. And you see now I've got a nice cross-section image of my Z-ring. To get back to my XY view, I just click Reset. Another handy tool, again for 3D visualization, is um, the Render 3D Volume tool. Okay, so you can see here that it plots the whole field of view that's currently shown. So what actually you usually want to do is zoom right into the feature that you want to look at, and then click Render 3D Volume, and there you go. You have a nice 3D ring-like structure in this case. Okay. Um, finally, so uh, you can save the state of, of your Palm Silver session. So that will save not only your data, but where you are in your analysis. So for example, I save my data here as a map file. And then say I, I zoom out, change my gamma, etc. Now if I load the file I just saved, it will bring me back exactly to my palm silver state that I saved it in. Okay. Um, there's additional documentation here, for example, on some of the other plugins, notably drift correction being a very common task. Um, and if you notice any bugs, then please report them on the issue tracker here, and we will endeavor to fix them. Um, great, and good luck with your data analysis.